in the day of Sodom and Gomorrah, people were doing all kinds of transsexuality also. So, my friends, all of the things, some of the things you think that are new are not new. And you were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath. Return to Jesus Christ. Return to God if you have wandered away from God. Return to Him. And God will shine His light on you. And God will lighten your ways. And your ways will be the path of righteousness and holiness. And not the path of sinners. The Bible says there is a man that pleases God. And that is a man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked. The man that does not walk in the counsel of the wicked is a righteous man. In his days, he meditates on the word of God day and night. You see, notice you don't meditate on yoga. You're not supposed to cross your legs and, and put your tip of your fingers together and meditate on empty things. The meditation are the meditation of God. The one who meditates on God and His words. He, the Bible said, should be like a tree planted near the water streams. That gives its fruitage at its life, at its time. That the wither, that the foliage, the tree, the leaves of it does not wither. That everything that He would do, He does will succeed. Sir, you blocking the traffic, sir. You blocking the traffic, sir. Sir, you blocking the traffic. There's uh, the, can you? There's you blocking the traffic, sir. You blocking the traffic. Uh, you you might get hit by car. I don't want you to get hit by car. Okay. Oh, okay. Fine. That's sir. I'm not. I'm preaching the gospel. You over there? Why would I be disturbing your peace? You hate if you hate God. If you hate the if you hate Christians, do you hate God? Do you hate God? I don't believe in God. Okay, then go your merry way. This is for those who believe in God. It doesn't concern you, sir. Just go your merry way. Okay, thank you, sir. Have a good day. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to God except through Him. You see, that's what happened when we preach the good news, the devil comes out. When, we, when the gospel is being preached, the devil comes out. Yes, we know the devil by their words and by their deeds. We know who the devils are. The Bible said those who are of God have the Spirit of God in them. And then there are those who do not have the Spirit of God in them, but they have the Spirit of the devil. And those people who have the spirit of the devil, when they hear the word of God, it, it agitates them. It agitates them. They can't handle themselves. They don't know what to do with themselves. Like this man that came across the street and started yelling at me. What's the problem? All, he, all the reason is because he heard God. He heard the gospel. He, he, he went crazy. He went berserk. He went berserk. That is the sign of our day, that is a sign when someone is indwelled by the devil. When they hear the word of God, they are, they go berserk. They can't handle themselves. They don't know what to do. Because no one has ever, no one has ever told them the truth before. You see, no one has ever told them the truth. That is how people act. It is good. It is all fine and dandy. When you go inside your bubble and talk in your echo chamber, it's okay to be in echo chamber until someone disagrees with you. There are a lot of people that seems like they're very nice people. They walk around, you think that they're very nice people because they behave nice, they try to act nicely until 
until you disagree with them and you see how nasty they are. So when the word of God is being preached, the devil comes out of people and the devil goes berserk. And we hear it all the time. But the Bible tells us that happy, happy is he, happy is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked. Happy is that man who does not take counsel from the wicked. You see all the things that are going on in our generation today. There are many people that are corrupting minors. Many people who are corrupting children's minds. There are many people today who are corrupting children. And how do they corrupt the children? By teaching them things that are ungodly. By teaching children and putting ideas in children's mind and telling them a little girl that you can be a boy and telling a little boy that you can be a girl if you really want to it's not about your chromosomes it's not about anything anything science you can be whoever you want to be and people that goes to libraries and dress like the opposite sex to go read to our children as if to tell our children that this is great way to live your life this is a great role model to become whatever happens to teaching your children to be to be godly whatever happens to teaching your children to be decent today our children are no longer free our children are no longer protected Today we go, we go into the room and we kill our children and killing them in the room is not enough. The ones that made it out of the room, we corrupt their minds. We read them gender bending books to try to corrupt them, to turn them against their nature, to corrupt them against the, gen, the, the, the creation who God created them to be. I'm here to speak against those people who corrupt the mind of minors. And I am here to say to quit corrupting the mind of minors. Minors are protected by God. Children are the blessings of God. And when you corrupt the mind of those children, God is not happy with you. Children are the blessings of God. And they are to be protected right in the womb as well as when they are outside and that and i am here for the children i'm here for the children you're here for no one i'm here for our children and for the next generation you see that is the problem with our our, our, our nations today when you stand up for the when you're standing up for the children there are people who hate children and they want to stand up against you but we are not afraid. We are not afraid because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I am not afraid. I am not afraid of what man can do to me. Jesus said, do not be afraid of him who can kill the body but cannot do anything after that. But you should be afraid. But be afraid of him who, can, who has the authority to destroy the body and the soul. The Bible said to be afraid, Jesus said to be afraid of such person, God. God is the one who can destroy the body and destroy the soul. I'm here to speak the truth and those who do not like the truth can do with it whatever they want. The Bible said that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is everlasting life. You see, when truth why they marry you? I don't know. I asked them. The truth. The truth. When the truth becomes a crime, when truth becomes a crime on the street, you are being ruled by criminals. Who are ruled by criminals when truth becomes a crime? I am ruled. I am ruled by the Most High. And so truth is not a crime in my life. Truth is great. The truth is great. Truth is not a crime. But when you are ruled by the devil, the truth becomes a crime. 
and you will want to persecute anybody that speaks the truth because you are of the devil. You are of the devil. That's why you, you want to stand against those who speak the truth because you do not agree with the truth. And let me show you why the devil, Jesus called the devil the father of lies. In John chapter 8, in the book of John chapter 8, Jesus called the devil the father of lies. When the Bible, when Jesus Christ, when Jesus was on the earth and he was speaking the truth, there were people that were protesting him. They were protesting him and they wanted to kill him. And Jesus said, you want to do, you want to kill me because you are of your father, the devil. He said, Jesus said that you are of your father, the devil. Jesus said to them, you are of your father, the devil. And your will is to do the will of your father. Your will is to do the will of your father. He is a murderer from the beginning. He has nothing to do with the truth. When he lies, he, he speaks out of his own character. For he is a liar and the father of lies. The Bible says that the devil is a father of lies. The devil is a father of lies. And that is why when you speak the truth, the devil don't like it. Because the devil loves it's his nature. The nature of the devil is to lie. He cannot help himself. That is why when, when you speak the truth, the devil does not like it. That is why when you speak the truth, the devil hates it. So, but we are going to continue to speak the truth. We are going to continue to speak the truth. The truth is not going away. The many people will want the truth to go away. Many people today on this commercial drive may want the truth to be hidden under the rugs. But we're not going to sweep the truth under the rug. We are going to proclaim it from the rooftop. Jesus Christ said, whatever, whatever you have been, whatever I teach you, I whisper to you, shout it from the rooftop. So we will continue to shout the truth from the rooftop. It does not matter whatever the devil can do, whatever the devil says. We can continue to preach the gospel. We're going to shout it from the rooftop, hallelujah. Yeah, we're all lonely, buddy. If the devil does not like hallelujah. it, he hallelujah. can take another, he can plug his ears. If the devil does not like the truth. But we are not going to be silent from speaking the truth of God. Because the truth is life. Jesus said the truth gives life. The word that I speak to you are spirits. Jesus said, Jesus said that my word is true. Jesus said that I am the way and I am the truth and I am the life. No man comes to God except through me. So Jesus Christ is the way of the truth. He is the way, the truth and the life. No man comes to the Father except through Him. Come to Jesus Christ today. Come to Jesus Christ today and you can have eternal life. Jesus Christ is the truth. Jesus Christ is the everlasting life. The everlasting life that God has promised man has come. The Bible said that the grace of God has appeared grace of God has appeared and that grace of God is Jesus Christ the grace of God has appeared and he's teaching us to turn away from ungodliness to turn away from ungodliness and to turn to righteousness the grace of God is telling us to speak the truth to speak the truth at all times People may not like the truth, the devil may not like the truth, but speak the truth. But we are the people of God and we are the people of truth. I know the truth today has become a crime in Canada. Truth has become a crime on commercial drive. This place 
or used to be occupied by godly people, at least God-fearing people occupied this place before. This place was occupied by Italians from people from Europe. It's from Europe. There is truth has died today from here. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And if you come to him, you will have life and have it in full. But if you continue to reject him, you only have yourself to blame. If what I'm saying today does not apply to you, if what I'm saying today makes you angry, all you can do is to turn away from your sin or walk away. You either do one, two things. Turn away from your sin and repent of it or walk away. But I'm here to call sinners to repentance. That is what Jesus Christ said. Jesus said, I come not to call the, unri the righteous, but I'm here, I'm, I came to call the unrighteous to repentance. Jesus is calling the unrighteous today. If you are walking in sin, turn to Jesus Christ. If you are living in hopelessness, Jesus Christ is a hope for you. All you have to do is to repent, obey God, come from your sins, and you will live. The hope we are speaking of today, the hope that we are speaking of today, only comes through Jesus Christ. This hope, the devil does not want you to smell this hope. The devil does not want you to grasp this hope. But this hope came through the door, the door of salvation. This hope comes from Jesus Christ. And if you turn away from your sin, and draw near to Him, to God, and God will draw near to you, and this hope will be yours. If you draw away from God, you will live in a hopelessness, you will live a hopeless life, which God does not want you to live. There are many people today who are hopeless. There are many people today who, are, who have hate in their hearts. There are many people today who have murder in their hearts. Jesus said that those things are wicked. They hate your brothers. You are a wicked man. If you love your neighbor as you love yourself, you are a good man. And you cannot love your neighbor as yourself unless you love God first. And you cannot love God unless you draw near to Him. And you cannot draw near to God unless you repent of your sins. And acknowledge that you are a sinner. I acknowledge that without His saving grace, that you have no hope in life. That without His saving grace, that all that is remained, all that remains for you, is judgment of God. But if you walk in a wise, in a, in a wise way, if you walk like the wise. And if you walk with the wise, you will become wise. There's none other than no wise man that ever lived here on planet Earth besides Jesus Christ. And knowing that there is a judgment day, knowing that there's judgment coming, we call sinners to repent. We call men who are lost to be found. Jesus Christ can find you today if you are lost. Jesus Christ came into the world to save the lost. Jesus came into the world to rebuke the devil and to destroy the works of the devil. And Jesus Christ can destroy the works of the devil in your life today. And all you have to do is to turn from your sins. All you have to do is turn from your sins and obey the gospel. The Bible said, the Bible said that the wicked shall turn to the grave and every nation that forgets God. The wicked shall turn to the grave and so is every nation that forgets God. And if this nation, Canada, has forgotten God, God will destroy it. Just as he destroyed many other nations before Canada. He will destroy this nation. You and I are not immune to the judgment of God. 
you and I are not immune to the unrighteousness that the devil permeates in our society and that you have bought into. You are not immune from the judgment that is coming upon those unrighteousness. That if you turn, you repent, you will live. The Bible says in Psalms chapter 7, Oh my God, the Lord my God, and you are take refuge. Save me from all my pursuers and deliver me. Lest like a lion they'll tear my soul apart. Render it in pieces with none to deliver. So don't be a hater. I, you have hate in your heart and you need you need the sanctifying grace of God to change your heart from hate. You have your God then go go your way. Where's, where's your God? Where, who is your God? Who is your God sir? Who is your God? Who is your God? Money? The great creator. That's great creator. If you know Okay. Okay. Sir, 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 if you hate, if you worship the great creator, there's no way you'll be angry at you, at me. Great creator is not angry. Great creator, the creator, those who follow great, who, who follow the one who created the heavens and the earth are not angry people like you. You're an angry person. You have hate in your heart. Save me from those. Oh Lord my God, if I have done this, if they... If there is any wrong in my hand, if I have repaid my friends with evil and plundered my in and pl uh, plundered my enemy without a cause, let the enemy pursue my soul and overtake it, and let him trample on my life to the ground and lay my glory in dust. But if I have not done so, God should pursue my enemies. Arise, O Lord, in your anger. Lift yourself up against the fury of my enemies. Away from me. Awake for me. You have appointed a judge. Let the assembly of the people gather about you. Over it, return on high. The Lord judges the people. Judge me, O Lord, according to your right, my righteousness and according to the integrity that is in me. Oh, let the evil of the wicked come to an end. And may you establish the righteous. You who test the mind and heart. O oh, righteous God, my shield is with God who saved the upright in heart. God is a righteous judge and a God who feels indignation every day against the wicked. God is angry at the wicked every day. God is angry at the wicked every day. And that is why we are here, is to call you to repentance. That is why we are here today, is to call you to obedience, in obedience to God, so that you can live so that you can have life in abundance because God is angry with you if you are continuing to live in wickedness if you continue to spite his if you continue to practice violence and wickedness and have hate in your heart you do not know God you do not know God that is why many people today have hate in their hearts the devil has lied to them and the devil has them under his clutches. And the devil has told him, look at what is done to your what was done to your ancestors. You shouldn't like them. You should not like the white man. You should hate the white man. That's what the devil whispers in your ears every day. And all your life you obsess with the white people. All your life. That's all you spend your life thinking about. That's because the devil got you. Well, my ancestors were here first and then the white man came and took them away and that's what you occupy your life with. And so because of that, you store hatred in your heart. You store hatred in your heart. And you forget that, 
that wicked men will use any means possible to practice wickedness. And But the devil has lied to you. And because the devil has lied to you, he has filled your heart with hate, hatred. And he's keep on supplying you with alcohols. He keep on supplying you with all the booze to keep you doped up, to keep you stuck in your past. But Jesus Christ came into the world to change all of that. Jesus Christ came into the world to set you free from alcoholism. Jesus Christ came into the world to set you free from hatred. Hatred of other people, hatred of other, other people because they look different from you. May God restore, may God give you peace. May God open your hearts and your eyes to see the truth so that you can fall on your faces and worship God and change your ways. Because Jesus Christ, He came to seek, to save that which was lost. That is who Jesus Christ is. He came into the world to seek and save that which was lost. And many of you today are lost. And many people today here practicing witchcraft. And many people here today practicing tarot cards. Practicing tarot card reading. There are many people here today who are, war, who are practicing warlock. There are many people today practicing whoredom. There are many people today that practice Wicca. All of these things are worshipping of other gods. All of these things are sinful before God. And God is calling you today, commercial drive, to repent. God is calling you today, commercial drive, to change your ways. And walk in His ways, in His light, and obey His words. So God is angry at the wicked every day. God feels indignation for the wicked. Because they... In their hearts, in their heart they have murdered, in their heart they have hated those people without a cause. In their heart they have hated the truth. If a man does not repent, God will wet his sword and he shall bend the readiness of his bow. And he has prepared for him his deadly weapon, making his arrow fiery shaft. Behold, the wicked conceive evil and is pregnant with mischief and give birth to lies. The wicked does give birth to lies. He makes a pit, digging it, and he falls into the hole that he has made. His mischief return upon his own head and his own skull, his violence descends. I will give to the Lord the thanks due to his righteousness and I will sing praise to the name of the Lord the Most High. For those who walk with God will receive the reward of eternal life but those that walk in the counsel of their own hearts will be put to shame. Those who walk according to their own ways that they have carved out for themselves those people will receive the judgment, will receive the recompense of their ways upon their heads. But they that walk in obedience to God will live. They that walk in righteousness through Jesus Christ, they that obey the word of God, the truth and the life, Jesus Christ will be saved. So turn from your ways and be made whole again. Turn from your sin that you may live. The obedient to God is the key to righteousness. The obedient to God is the key to everlasting life. The everlasting life and the kingdom of God that is soon to come. The Bible said there is a kingdom coming. The kingdom of God is coming and it, the kingdom of God will take over. All, all the other kingdoms and God will crush every wickedness under the sun and God will destroy the, the governments 
the wicked governments of this world and will establish his kingdom and he will reign forever. Jesus Christ is the king of that kingdom and Jesus Christ will reign forever. This is the kingdom that Jesus prayed about. This is the kingdom that Jesus talked about when he said, Father, let your kingdom come and let your will be done on the earth as it is done in heaven. This is the same kingdom that Jesus preached about when Jesus said to the people of his time, repent, repent and believe in the gospel. Repent and believe in the gospel. Repent of what? Repent of your unrighteousness, your whoredom, repent of your prostitution, repent of your sin, your, your sexual immorality, repent of your indecency and your foul mouth, repent of your homosexuality, repent of your lazy bianism. Let God shine his light on you. Jesus Christ can set you free. The Bible said repent. Repent of your sins. Repent of your drunkenness. Repent of all the sin that leads man to the grave. Repent of your indecency, idolatry, hatred of God, and hatred of your neighbor, lying, cheating. Repent of all of these things. Repent of your pedophilia. Repent of your whoredom, of your voodoo practices. Repent of your transsexuality. Repent of your tarot card reading, or warlockism, or practicing Wicca. Repent and you will have life. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to the Father except through Him. Repent of your sexual orgies. Repent of your palm reading. There is a way that looks good in the eyes of a man, but in the end is death. And the way that you are walking is a way of death. If you are walking away from God, if you are living a life of immorality, you are living a life of wickedness. If you are living a life of godlessness, you may not, you may say to me, well, I'm not a drunkard, but I'm not a drunkard, but I, 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 I like the opposite sex. You are still, you are also a sinner. You may, not, you may say I'm not a witch. I don't practice witchcraft, but I'm, I'm a drunkard. You are still a sinner. You may practice, you may say I'm not a gigolo, but I do gamble and false accuse my brothers, you are still a sinner and God is calling you today to repent. Repent of your sin and you will be saved and you will have eternal life. Jesus Christ came into the world to seek and save that which was lost. Yes, Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners of which I myself is part of it. But Jesus Christ gave me life. Jesus opened my eyes to see the truth that I may walk in, in obedience to his word, that I may walk in godliness and not in godlessness. That is what Jesus Christ can do for you. Jesus Christ can save you. He can set you free. He can set you free, my friend. He can take away the shackles of the devil the shackles of wickedness and can give you life. That is what Jesus does. That is what Jesus does. He is the lily of the valley. He is the rescuer of those who are, who are held in, in the net trap of the enemy. He is the one who loses the bonds of those who are captive, who are held captive by the word and the ways and the wiles of the enemy. Jesus Christ came into the world to destroy the works of the enemy. And I'm here to tell you the truth today. If you have sinned against God, if you find yourself on this list, 
you have sinned against God and if you repent of your sin you can be saved the problem is people remaining in their sin the problem is people remaining in their sin that is the problem those who have sinned and remain in their sin they are the ones who will be judged but everyone that forsake everyone that forsake their sins and repent of it come to Jesus Christ they will be saved they are the only ones that will be saved do not continue to practice immorality and think that there is no God there is a God who created the heavens and the earth and that is the God who will judge you on the last days that is the same God that you deny is the same God that will judge you on the judgment day you can deny God all you want it's not going to make him go away you can deny God all you want but denial does not mean that you have found the truth denial does not mean that what you have denied will go away come to Jesus Christ come to the Savior that you may live and you may have your being the ways of wages of sin is death anyone on this list is on this list of death anyone on this list is walking into the precipice anyone on this list does not know God and God is calling you to repent if you're on this list turn from it turn from your sin repent come to God and repentance and you can be set free your chains can be removed right now you are on the bondage of the devil if you are on this list your father is the devil your father is not God but they that walk come to Jesus Christ the Bible said to them he has given the power to become the sons of God those who were not sons of God before cannot become the sons of God through Jesus Christ that is why the wages of sin is death my friends if you continue to live this life and the life of of sinful loss if you continue to reject God you will die you will die but if you receive God come from your wickedness you will live you will live great is this godliness this great is this godliness that came to us in a person of Jesus Christ who was crucified and raised rose again on the third day and preached in the world Jesus Christ is his name and if you turn to him the kingdom of God will be yours the Bible speak of the kingdom of God that it is coming soon and only those who are walking in obedience to God are going to enter it only those whose name is found in the book of life will enter into it and those whose name are not found there will not enter into the kingdom of God the Bible said of those that books will open in the last days in the judgment throne of God the books will be open the book and the dead will be raised and the dead will be judged by what is written in those books and whoever name is found not written in the book of life is cast into the lake of fire the Bible said on the judgment day there are books that will be open and those books that are open are the book of life and anyone whose name is not written in that book is cast will be cast into the lake of fire only those who are found written in the Lamb's book of life will live will not be judged but those whose name is not written in therein will be judged and they will be cast into the lake that burns with sulfur and that is why we are here today that is why I'm here today to tell you the truth so that you may not end up in the lake of fire so that you may not end up in the lake of fire because Jesus said 
What shall he profit a man? What shall he profit a man if he gain the whole world but loses his own soul? What shall he profit a man if he gain the whole world but loses his own soul? And what can a person, what can a person gain from losing your soul? What can a person trade in exchange for their soul? You know, because your soul is precious, you cannot trade anything for your soul. Because your soul is precious, you cannot, your soul is important to you. You cannot trade it off for anything else. You cannot sell your soul to the devil because your soul is important to God. But if you sold your soul to the devil, there's only one place for you. It's called the lake of fire. And that is a place that was prepared for the devil and his angels. That is a place prepared for the devil and his angels. And I don't want to see you go to the lake of fire. I want to see you live. I want to see you have life in full. Jesus Christ is calling you today. Jesus Christ is calling you today to come to me. Jesus said, all you who are weary and loaded down and I will give you rest. Jesus Christ can offer you rest. He said, take my yoke and learn from me, for I am mild. Jesus Christ can give you his yoke. His yoke is kind. And his load is light. The yoke of Jesus Christ is kind. And his load is light. And you will find refreshment for your soul. Do not let your soul go to the devil. Do not let your soul turn to Sheol. Turn to Jesus Christ. And you can live. Come to the Savior. And you will live. The life that you are living right now is temporary. The life that you are living right now is temporary. After death, there's judgment. After death comes judgment. You can have eternal life in Jesus Christ. Why must you die in your sins? Why must you die in your sins? Jesus Christ is calling you today to let down your burden and come to Him. He can take your burden away. Of your burden of drug abuse or alcoholism, Jesus Christ, you can lay it at His feet and He can take it away because He cares for you. He cares for you. Jesus cares for you. And the devil wants you dead. The devil wants you dead, but Jesus wants you to live. The devil does not care about you. The devil does not care about you. The devil wants to see you dead. The devil's job is to use you. And when the devil is finished using you, he will dump you. That's what the devil does. The devil uses and dumps. He does not hang on. The devil does not love you. He hates you. He hates your God. All he, do, he does is he uses people to accomplish his will and he dumps them. But Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, for those who are his own. Jesus Christ laid down his life. That is how you can tell the difference. One wants to use you and dump you. One gave his life as a ransom for you. That's the difference between Jesus Christ and the devil. The devil is a user. The devil is a deceiver. The devil is a murderer. But Jesus Christ gives life. Jesus Christ tells the truth. Jesus Christ does not use people and dump them. Jesus Christ uses you and creates potential for your life. Jesus Christ is the only one who loves you. 
So Commercial Drive, I'm calling you today to come to Jesus Christ. Commercial Drive, I'm calling you today. If you have ear, let the Bible say, let those who have ears hear the word the Spirit is saying. God wants you to be saved. God wants you to have eternal life. God does not want you to get hooked up in drugs and inject yourself and die. God does not want you to continue living your life a transsexual lifestyle, destructive lifestyle. God wants you to have peace. God wants you to be whole. He wants to cure you from all the sickness that you may have. And Jesus Christ is the answer. Jesus Christ is the answer to all your questions. Because in Him there is life. And this life is the light of man. And this life, this life shines in the darkness. It is shining in the darkness of commercial drive today. And the darkness does not comprehend. And the darkness cannot overpower it. And the darkness cannot kick it away. Jesus Christ is here to shine today. And He's here to shine in your life if you let Him in. He's here to shine in your life if you let Him in. Jesus Christ is not going to force you to come to Him. Jesus Christ is going to speak the truth to you. And He's going to call you to come. And then if you, if you don't like it, you can move on and go your merry life and then see what happened in the last days. You can go your merry life the same way it was. Jesus said that the day when the Son of Man come is the same way it was in the day of in the day of Noah. The Bible said Jesus said in that word, He said just as it was in the days of Noah, so it shall be in the days of the coming of the Son of God. Because in the days of Noah, they were making fun of Noah. Imagine Noah. Noah constructing an ark. God told him. God told him to make an ark to save his family. To save all those who are willing to come and to preach to them, to tell them that there is a destruction coming. That their destruction coming. But while Noah was constructing the ark, and while he was telling the people of his days that destruction is coming, they were making fun of him. They were making fun of him. They were making fun of Noah. Until the day when Noah finished the ark, and he went into the ark with his family, and God shut the door, and the rain began to fall. There's the ground where there's water reserves in the ground was cracked open. And the whole world was deluged, was filled with water. Those people who were mocking Noah were no longer mocking him. Jesus Christ said it shall be the same way in the coming of the Son of Man. It shall be the same way it was in the days of Noah. People were drinking, people were getting married, people were having all their parties until Noah went into the ark and the water came and swept them away. That is the same way it shall be in the coming of the Son of God. Jesus also used Sodom and Gomorrah as, as an example. Jesus said it will be in the way just as the day of Sodom and Gomorrah, it shall be the same way with the coming of the Son of God. Because in the day of Sodom and Gomorrah, they were having all their orgies. In the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, they were having all their pride parades. In the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, they were so proud of what they're doing. They were so proud of their lives. You too, sir. In the day of Sodom and Gomorrah, people were doing all kinds of transsexuality also. 
So, my friends, all of the things, some of the things you think that are new are not new. All of the things that you think that are not new are new are not new. There are old things repackaged. There's so, someone said that new news are old news happening to new people. All the things that you practice, Eastern philosophies and all those Eastern mysticism, they are not new. You just discovered it just in the 21st century. It become new to you. It looks like it's new. Yoga is not new, my friends. Yoga is not 21st century. It's been there for a long time. That's how, that's how the, the, the Hindus worship their gods. That's how the Hindus worship their gods. So whatever you think, my friends, that you just discovered, that, they, that it might be new, it's not new. In the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, the people were getting drunk, the people were eating and drinking and getting married and having all their orgies until when Lot and his family left the city until Lot and his family left the city and it rained from the, from the heavens fire and brimstone it rained fire and brimstone upon their heads and there were nothing left and you can go today you can travel to the Middle East today and you can see what God did to Sodom and Gomorrah and Amra and Ad Adna all you have to do is travel to the Middle East all you have to do is travel to the Middle East you can go to Sodom and Gomorrah today they have a tourism for Sodom and Gomorrah do you know that there's a tourism for Sodom and Gomorrah all you have to do is look it up in your Google Mr. Google will tell you you look up Sodom and Gomorrah and see what God did to that place. He torched it to the ground. God torched that city to the ground. He rained fire and brimstone on that city. And today you can go to Sodom and Gomorrah, you can pick up a sulfur ball. You can pick up, the whole place is littered with sulfur balls. And if you put your life against it, it burns and it burns blue light, blue fire. It burns very, very bright and very, very hot. But Sodom and Gomorrah was a city, was a city that four times a year Sodom never repented of their sins. But four times a year Sodom has a festival that they do. It's similar to Gay Pride Parade today, Sodom and Gomorrah had a festival four times a year where they go in a valley they go down into a valley and they celebrate their orgies there they celebrate orgies in Sodom four times a year and each and every one of them will get drunk and will party and will get drunk and everyone will lay hands on their neighbor's wife Everyone would do all kinds of sexual immorality on that day. That is how Sodom and Gomorrah live. Four times a year. No wonder why God burned it to the ground. No wonder why God sent his angel. Even though these things were happening, God still sent his angel to try to see if what he has heard about this nation, about these cities, are true. So God sent two angels down there to investigate what was going on in Sodom. And when they saw the angels, they saw the angels, the angels were, were in a body of men. They were, these men, these men were so infatuated with these angels to the point that they wanted to break down the door and they said to, saw, to, to, to Lot, they said, come send these men out who have visited you. Send them out so that we can have intercourse with them. That is what Sodom did. And God, and God sent fire and brimstone 
and burn it to the ground. And God sent fire and brimstone and burned that city to the ground. And today you can go visit it. You don't even have to go visit it. You can just look up your computer. Just type in Sodom and Gomorrah. And you will see tons of videos on this place called the cities, the cities of the plain. And what were they doing there? They were corrupting the mind of miners. They were teaching all miners all kinds of evil. And today we have done more than Sodom and Gomorrah. And you think that God will let us go unpunished? You think that God will let us go our merry way? No, he will not. If God does not do the same thing to us, then his justice is delaying. And when God's justice is delaying, that means that God wants you and I to be saved so that we will not come under judgment. Because the city of Sodom was given so much time to repent, but they chose not to repent. God gave them ample time. God gave them an ample time to change. And Jesus looks at that historical fact. I know some of you today don't believe that it's, may not believe it's a historical fact, but you can look it up yourself. Jesus looks at that historical fact and say, this is how it will be on the last days. That just as it was in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, it will be when the Son of Man comes again. So I'm here to tell you today that if you live in all of these sins, if you're living in all these, all these junk, God is calling you today to repent. He's not calling you to repent because He hates you. He's not calling you to repent because He does, he does not have any, any other thing to do. He's calling you to repent because He loves you. He wants you to be saved. He knows that He is going to bring down just, justice hammer on you. And if you're not repenting, you are going to be swept away with everyone. But would everyone come? Would everyone come? No. Not everyone will come. Some people will mock, just like they mocked in the days of Noah. Some people will mock, but God is a just God. Because He's a just God, He will never allow sin to go unpunished. Because God is a just God, he will not let you continue in your sin without any consequences. Because if He does not judge you, He cannot be a just God. So when you leave Him no choice, guess what happens?